$1,000 a year. Inequality seems to matter. And there are social science experiments at universities that appear to bear this out. Here's my favorite experiment. Harvard School of Public Health in 1995, a group of psychologists had human subjects and they posed two alternative societies that they had to choose from. In society number one, you earn $50,000 a year and all your neighbors earn $25,000 a year. In society number two, you earn $100,000 a year, but all your neighbors earn $200,000 a year. Which do you choose? 56% took the first. They chose being actually poorer as long as they're richer than the schlub next door. Okay, now, this is kind of a window onto the soul, right? It's a, um, when I was a kid, my dad used to give me this advice. He'd say, son, it's, it's not enough to win. Your friends have to lose, too. <laughs> <laughs> and the data appear to back that up. And people have taken that for generations at face value. Inequality brings happiness. Karl Marx built his entire political philosophy on the notion that, in, that envy is awful and envy brings us down. And to stop envy, we have to take from the people who make and give to the people who take. You penalize the makers and you reward the takers. You have to do it to get a happier society. And that is the philosophy on which the 30% coalition bases its founding and fundamental governing principles. On the idea that it is just important to bring the top down as it is to bring the bottom up. And how do you do that? You do that with policies. You do that with policies that reward unproductive institutions like the government that spread money around. And that's exactly what we're seeing today. 38% of American workers have no federal income tax liability. In January 2011, 47% will have no federal income tax liability. In the past 12 months, the federal government has created 86,000 permanent federal jobs, not the transitory ones for the census, permanent jobs, at the same time that this president has presided over the destruction of 4 million private sector jobs. The average wage in the public sector today is $71,000 a year. The average private sector wage is $40,000 a year. This is income spreading, my friends. That is the purpose. And the second way that you do this is by penalizing the true engine of income inequality. And income inequality comes from one institution in America called entrepreneurship. The fact that people can be entrepreneurial and keep the rewards of their success is the reason we have more income inequality in this country than other countries. You may like entrepreneurship, but if you hate income equality, you have to attenuate those rewards. You have to bring the entrepreneurs down. That is why the president has a policy starting in January 2011 of raising taxes on families making $250,000 a year or above and not raising taxes on others because we are penalizing entrepreneurs while we reward the government. That's how you spread income around. That is exactly what's going on. Now that's simple, it's elegant in a way, but it's wrong. And it's wrong because it misses one piece of data, one piece of evidence. And the evidence is this. It misses a variable called earned success. Earned success is the belief that you are creating value in your life or in the lives of other people. And when you ask people about their earned success, it explains all of their happiness in the workplace, and money doesn't explain anything. For example, if I take two people, randomly sampled in the population, who are exactly alike in terms of their race and their religion and their education and their age and where they come from, and both of them say they have earned a lot of success in their jobs, but one earns eight times as much as the other, statistically, they will be equally happy in anonymous surveys. The data show that when you talk about earned success, the rewards to entrepreneurship, the creation of value, people don't care about money anymore. That's what they're missing. They think it's because of money. Money follows earned success in a free enterprise economy, but it is the earned success and not the money that explains the differences in happiness between people, the differences in flourishing between people. When the government spreads the money around, it's spreading around cash, but not success, and it won't work to lift our country up. There are three facts I want you to remember about income inequality. Fact number one, income inequality does not cause unhappiness. That's a statistical fact. Fact number two, income redistribution will not lead to greater happiness in the United States. And fact number three is that income redistribution lowers the incentives for people to be entrepreneurial so they earn less success and they become less happy. Actually, paradoxically, 
This explains what we've always seen. Income redistribution always promises happiness, but it always leads to misery, and that's the reason. The reason is because it's looking in the wrong place for our happiness. Now, this leads to a moral imperative. The moral imperative is this. What is the system that leads us to the greatest level of earned success? The answer is the system that lets us keep the rewards of our innovation. It's the system that matches our skills with our passions. It's the free enterprise system. The free enterprise system is a happiness machine. It's not a cash machine, that too. It's kind of like a big ATM, too. But it is a happiness machine, and that's why it matters morally. We can say that it's an economic alternative, but it's not. It's a moral imperative, and that's what's worth fighting for. There's another moral imperative. There's another moral imperative, which is this. There are too many people who don't believe, right or wrong, that the pathways to their earned success really exist. They believe that the promises of the free enterprise system are hollow. My belief is that our moral imperative for people who believe in the free enterprise system is looking for more true individual opportunity for more people. That's a lot harder than spreading money around. That's a lot harder than income equality. It means actually thinking what our stewardship responsibilities are in a country blessed with the best free enterprise system on the face of the earth. What am I doing today as the president of the American Enterprise Institute? to help more people who feel more marginalized understand pathways to earn success. That is, in fact, my apostolate. And I believe it's, a, it's one that's worth adopting by more people who share our point of view. Now, where are we? I w I've asked you to remember three things at the outset, and I want to go over them one more time. Point number one, you've seen the data. America's a 70-30 nation. Don't let anybody tell you that your free enterprise views are right-wing. You might be right wing, but that's not the point. This is a conservative summit, but the free enterprise system can and should transcend whether or not we call ourselves conservatives. It's 70-30 stuff. It's certainly not Republican. You saw what happened in the last administration. Free enterprise is a core cultural value of 70% of Americans. Point two, it's not about the money. It's about the flourishing. If you agree with me that the moral imperative is better lives, more opportunity, more earned success for more people so that they can enjoy the lives that you enjoy and that in point of fact, free enterprise will continue to be America's gift to the world, you understand that it is not about the money. It is about the happiness, and we will lose the argument as long as we keep getting trapped in a corner talking about efficiency. It is the most efficient system. It does lead to the greatest wealth, but that's not the big point. The big point is that it puts the life in life, and that's what we have to be comfortable talking about. And fact number three is that this is the fairest system. You know, we talk all the time about how do you get greater fairness? And how do you get greater fairness? According to President Obama, you, you spread the wealth around. When, he, when asked, why are you going to increase taxes on the top earning families in America, he said, we need more fairness and balance in our tax code. He thought bringing the top down would make our country fairer. Americans don't agree with that. Americans think that the fairest system is a system that rewards hard work, merit, and excellence. It's also a system that penalizes corruption, stupidity, free, rising and, free riding, and laziness. That is, in a nutshell, the free enterprise system. Why did your ancestors come to this country? They didn't come to this country to get a fairer system of government income redistribution. They didn't come to this country to get more welfare. They came to this country to get a fair break so that their hard work and the street smarts would get rewarded. That's why they came to this country. Don't forget, you own fairness. Never let another person tell you that free enterprise is unfair. The unfair system is one where the government picks the winners and losers and spreads around the wealth. That is not the vision of America's founders, and that is not the vision of your ancestors who took great entrepreneurial risk to come here as immigrants. Please don't forget that. I'm almost at the end. I'm at the end. But let me tell you, you know, let's remember quickly why this battle is worth fighting. You know, it's exhausting all the time, right? You, you watch TV and you you, can't, you just can't make this stuff up, what's going on in Washington, D.C. Every day, it's something new. You know, you feel like, I feel like I'm complaining all the time. And my wife says that, it, she says, it's just no fun to go to parties with you anymore, right? <laughs> Which is, you know, actually, it's a compliment. It means at one point, it was fun to go to parties with me. 